Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the dawn here in Juma, where it is still quite dark, and we are on the end of the lens here with the camera looking at a male leopard by the name of Tavagumi up the tree. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing on this Wednesday morning? Hello, my name is Steve. I'm joined this morning by my good friend BK on camera, and we are very excited to have you with us. And we're hearing alarm calls over my shoulder towards where the lions were last night. Just going to listen to if they get any more intense. But we have got the one and only Tavangumi. He must be five now. Must be about five, if I'm not mistaken. I remember him arriving two years ago. He was about three. So he's now established himself in this sort of Bifosuk sort of. Uh, southeastern southwestern section of Pufasuk into so sort of this little piece of oh, here comes a zebra beak eh? they must know Taylor's here oh Taylor and her zebras the zebras came running down the road and they got a little bit of a fright you see that little patch of dirt that behind its feet it was running towards us and then it just hit the brakes. Well, we've managed to find a tiny gap between the trees. Thank you for staring at us. Now he seems to be awake and actually paying attention to what's going on around him. I can't really see what's happening behind us. I'm just sort of dangling out the side of the car. Not really dangling out the side of the car, but you can see he's clearly interested in something. But we are now facing the wrong way, which is not great so i just want to see what he's going to do i don't know if there's impala or zebra or wildebeest or something behind us but whatever it is you can see how his ears are facing forward you can even watch his tail in sort of little moments and uh, movements he's thinking really deeply about his next move which makes me inclined to want to drive around let's just see how this plays out he could well just sit back down maybe he heard something maybe there's actually not even anything behind us but with the rain of course we've got our rain covers down it makes it a bit tricky to be able to see what's going on and i'm so thrilled that we managed to get a, a gap between the trees it's actually perfectly framed my goodness look what we've got here this is an incredible sighting incredible so we are just here by one of the pans that we come to quite a bit and uh, do some segments when you're doing the escape to nature especially here at Skoko and uh, we've got uh, two lionesses in the tree here how cool is this Now, when we came here this morning, uh, we weren't expecting to find them in the tree. We never actually found these lions, actually. Uh, one of the other respective field guides did. And we were close enough in the area, so we thought, let's give it a go, see if there is good signal. And we found them in the tree here. Okay, so the one has jumped out. Nah, you are very lucky. This is not very common to see lions in trees like this. It's got a branch in the mouth. Oh my, this, I'm so happy. Ah, oh, she's still got the branch in her mouth. Are you going to drop it? No, you must drop it. You're going to carry it with you. So, this disbehavior is still showing signs that this is a fairly young lion. Lioness, should I say? I'm going to imagine uh, sort of at the 16, 18 month range, round about there. Maybe a bit less. And you can actually still see that this is a juvenile lion or lioness just by that uh, faint rosetting that you're going to find on the, on the back legs and sometimes on the front legs and the chest, which usually fades with time, but not all the time, sometimes genetics. They hold on to those faint rosettes.
Well, the search for the three Amigo Cheetah continues, and they're making us work for it this morning, which is also good. Uh, it's not always a good thing to find animals as soon as you'd like to. Um, it's nice to work for it a little bit, because you generally then happen upon all sorts of other interesting animals, such as this beautiful Cape Mountain Zebra and very distinguishable traits that the mountain zebra do have that you can recognize them as opposed to the birchals or plains zebra where they've got stripes on their stomach the mountain zebra has got a white stomach which is probably the easiest way to distinguish between them but also looking very closely at those stripes no shadow stripes on the mountain zebra So everybody, we do thank you for joining us on this morning's sunrise, well, kind of sunrise, sunrise safari from all of our wonderful locations. We look forward to again hosting you this afternoon, hopefully a little bit more sunshine and a little bit less wind. Who knows what characters will show up for you on this Wednesday afternoon, but we thank you for your questions, your comments. Have a fantastic day further. Until then, good day and goodbye.